Okay, so we will now discuss module two of the first class. Uh, we'll do a brief uh, review of internet and the web uh, and focus a little bit on the um, history of web. Um, the internet, or also what one might say the net, is a worldwide uh, system of computer networks, users, um, where users at any computer can get information um, from any other computer, assuming that they have permission. And, um, 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 you know, it all started with a project called ARPANET, um, uh, which uh, pioneered the technology. Uh, underlying that is a uh, transportation uh, control protocol, an IP uh, internet protocol, uh, whereby um, the data transmission between different type computers uh, was made possible. Uh, before um, internet came uh, about, uh, there were some proprietary protocols, and um, IBM was a very major player, and um, uh, they, you had to do a lot of work in uh, connecting to uh, computers. And when one computer sent data to another computer, there were a lot of other um, customized effort that needed to be done to understand the data uh, representation that came from another computer. There were physical connection of the wires and so on and so forth. Um, and with the uh, internet protocol, there were addresses that were made available. Uh, and then uh, from that, one computer um, can find how to uh, transmit the message and uh, make it reach to another destination. Now, um, the web came, came about, uh, 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 the idea was conceived in 1989. Um, in fact, um, I have a link here uh, to this original proposal. Um, here is the original proposal uh, that um, uh, was uh, written by uh, Tim Berners-Lee when he was at CERN, um, which is the high uh, particle energy physics uh, uh, related research group um, in uh, Switzerland. And, um, um, you know, you can see here he has um, a little diagram that talks about hypertext. And the concept of hypertext and hyperdocument was not totally new, but to realize that, realize that in the sense of um, a computing infrastructure was uh, new. And um, um, here you can see going down there, he has a simple, uh, you know, uh, information on uh, uh, the uh, HTTP, uh, the Hypertext uh, Transportation uh, Protocol. Uh, and here you can see, for example, that a, um, a server requests information um, and that it knows to communicate with other server and um, uh, find that data and serve it up and give it to the uh, client uh, to display. And here he talks about uh, um, he says here, dummy hypertext server makes existing database look like a hypertext uh, to the browser. So you can kind of convert um, sort of uh, data in, let's say, a table uh, and, uh, in fact, uh, visualize that as a document right, on the web, on a browser window kind of thing. So this was the original proposal uh, by, teams Berner by Tim Berners-Lee. And um, the proposal... Um, uh, you know, they started implementing web at the, um, towards the end of 1990, right? Um, now, there have been a bunch of, you can see in my presentations, a bunch of links, and I highly recommend, and in fact, you are required to more or less um, uh, go through each of these uh, material uh, to get much uh, broader uh, perspective and, and depth and information on each of the topics that we are introducing to you here. Um, so, as I was kind of reviewing, there are uh, two key parts, uh, all resources and users on the Internet that are using uh, HTTP, a uh, system of internetwork hypertext documents. Right? So, HTTP uh, allowed in for uh, the connection and then what uh, got displayed, what got present, presented to the user is this uh, hypertext document. And that um, now that you could um, present your documents coming from any server, um, on any uh, computer uh, on the so-called uh, the World Wide Web, um, uh, basically made for what uh, is termed here as universe of network accessible information, right? So um, uh, earlier, when you wanted to get uh, data uh, from, um, let's say, uh, 
experiment gen create um, performed by another team that is using another computer to store the data there is to be quite a bit of effort to um they you know request that data uh, that data would be sent a uh, variety of ways through um, email uh, or ftp which is the file transfer protocol um and then when the data came um it may be in a format that would be uh, not the, that trivial or not that easy to display and the form in which the data was originally created as well as the form in the data in which the data is presented uh, would vary widely uh, so now with the standardization that comes with this http and html in particular html in this case uh, what happened was that um, the 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 representation of HTML, uh, there, there is, for example, uh, something that uh, describes a title of a document, something that describes a paragraph document. So these are the tags that you have in your HTML, and that uh, how to display them uh, can be uh, specified by the creator of the content. Uh, so the person who writes the HTML document, who creates this document, uh, decides how to be displayed, and then that can be um, that the document will be displayed in the form it was conceived uh, anywhere on any computer using a browser. So that was generally that is that was a key for promise in terms of um, making the data available to anybody else in the world. So go through uh, some of the links there, uh, and that will be uh, you'll find some very interesting material. Now here is a um, uh, in a, a diagram. Uh, I took it from uh, appropriate page from on Wikipedia, and there's again a link to that page uh, that discusses uh, some of the World Wide Web functions as a layer on the top of the internet. So you see at the very bottom, on the left hand side, um, I think there is a mention of. Uh, uh, s uh, someone who originally conceived of or discussed an idea um, on the right hand side um, uh, you, you, you know you see the person and or the effort that actually um, uh, reduce that particular idea to a practice that actually implement deployed that idea that then eventually became widely available and accessible so for example you start with the ethernet um, uh, and uh, you see that that was um, uh, started in 1973. Uh, 73. Uh, that was quickly followed by um, Surf and Khan's work on TCP/IP. Um, the ARPANET itself was there, uh, you know, but um, uh, the TCP/IP was the key that became, uh, you know, worldwide standard and um, uh, broadly used, on which other things were built. Uh, then you see. Um, uh, in 1990, uh, this HTTP colon slash slash, and that's a, you know, this is how, you know, with hypertext protocol with the uh, server address, you'll have the uh, URI that would occur, which is universal resource um, identifier or locator, and uh, that, uh, uh, you know, the credit there goes to Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, the idea of a link, for example, is fairly old. Uh, in 1945, uh, whenever Bush, um, a, uh, a defense uh, researcher as well as a, uh, I think, a professor at MIT. Uh, he wrote very influential piece of uh, information, as we may think. Uh, that was the title of his article in the Atlantic magazine, and um, uh, he talked about uh, the idea of uh, trailblazing and how one thing gets connected to other things, and uh, drawing analogy between what can, what how the human brain thinks and how. Um, uh, we can uh, mimic that um, uh, in computing system. So, um, but I, you know, uh, in the technological sense, uh, you know, the the real in, uh, discovery was done by Tim Berners Lee, or you might say, invention done by Tim Berners Lee. Um, that was then followed by uh, the work in HTML. Now, HTML itself also takes its, um, uh, you know, uh, inspiration from uh, uh, something that was very uh, popular, relatively popular in 1980s, uh, called SGML. So, SGML was a format uh, that publishers would use to, um, uh, you know, talk about a typical publication document, like a book or like a report or things of that nature, and. Um, uh, HTML, uh, the start was a rather very small subset of uh, some of the things in um, SGML, uh, but uh, 
done with respect to uh, document on the web, not document in the in the print. Right. So uh, that uh, and and that became a key um, part of the content. Uh, now the way content is the shown on the web has widely uh, uh, evolved. It evolved quite a bit from the original HTML. Uh, and some of you would know about it. If not, we'll talk more about that in the course also. Um, but uh, anyway, and then um, uh, in 1991, uh, when they conceived of HTML, they also implemented a browser, which it, it, the browser itself was called also World Wide Web, uh, um, a WWW browser. And um, that browser was very limiting. Are very limited and um, it didn't get that much attention. Nevertheless, people noticed the technology. Um, I had seen, I think, uh, uh, a version of that, um, but uh, like many other people, my attention uh, to the web, uh, you know, was drawn in 1993, uh, especially with uh, what you see there uh, as a mosaic browser. Right. So Mark Anderson and uh, by the way that Mosaic uh, browser effort eventually led to a company uh, to Netscape browser and a company uh, called Netscape. So uh, this this work was initially initially conceived at um, uh, Supercomputing Center uh, and uh, then then it became a browser and I think the Mosaic uh, browser was the first browser which kind of truly demonstrated uh, the power um, underlying power uh, yet not fully realized but um, uh, to to uh, you know many many people and um, I myself uh, started a project. Um, uh, at, I used to work at uh, Bell Communications Research, uh, Bell Core, um, counterpart of Bell Labs, which was very popular in those days, um, a, a project uh, related to metadata at, uh, at the, uh, uh, you know, um, so now, um, uh, and then I'll probably talk about that sometime. Uh, actually, in the, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pointer to um, a talk that I have uh, that discusses the work that we started in 1993-94. In fact, it became a commercial product in 1995 called InfoHarness. And then you can see here there is a mention of search engine, um, and you'll see in the next slide the engine search engine started much earlier than 98, but uh, really Google made a huge impact and still survives and is the dominant search engine of today. So. Um, the web is made possible by a whole series of standards. Um, you have standards for web design and applications um, that include HTML, CSS, SVG, AJAX. You have, um, uh, uh, and, and many of you probably know about uh, the style sheets or CSS. Then you have standard for the core of the web architecture. That includes how do you address something, URI, Universal Resource um, um, Identifier, HTTP uh, is the core and fundamental part of the uh, architecture. Uh, so I hope you understand the distinction between the basic architecture and the role of HTTP versus um, the content um, uh, and design in such where HTML is the uh, primary thing. Now, uh, after that, um, with so much content being generated on the web, uh, it was um, um, necessary to come up with a data exchange standard. And that came up, uh, you know, for that uh, XML was developed, extensible markup language, right? So there's a lineage of this SGML, HTML, XML. Now the XML was created not for human consumption, but more for machine to machine exchange of the data, right? So that's why it has a little different set of characteristics. Uh, and then there are a whole bunch of uh, style sheets and uh, schema and other related standards for H XML came. This was very important technology uh, uh, five, ten, uh, you know, twelve years ago. So um, uh, and that really enhanced the uh, speed at which data used to get exchanged between the servers and. Uh, uh, you know, kind of give underlying pipeline uh, for uh, uh, the whole web, uh, even if that XML data is not uh, typically consumed directly by humans. There are other set of uh, standards, they are called uh, web services related standards or web of services standards. So web services description language, WSDL is a core standard there and a whole bunch of standards for other related material things that we will not talk about. 
Uh, but basically, that what happened here is that um, earlier you started the web with uh, a document on a server and the ability to display the document in a browser. Eventually, people wanted to not just um, have a, a document and share the document. They wanted an entire application that is running on one server or one computer uh, to have the output displayed on another, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, another computer, another browser. Uh, they, you wanted to be able to invoke. Um, uh, there was a client-server paradigm that existed um, uh, that predates uh, web standard, uh, web technology itself. Um, but there, uh, the client uh, and the server, uh, you know, were rather connected um, and did not have the flexibility that HTTP gives and that the web gives. So what people said, well, what if we can put the applications in the um, web context and so then what happened is that um, you the people wanted to have the application not just document but application be a, an object on the web that anybody else should be able to invoke to call upon and get the answer from so now I can use my browser to invoke an application uh, at some server anywhere in the world somewhere in the world provide perhaps some input data and get the output back and display in my on my um, uh, browser. So that made applications universal, basically. And the services technology is a key to make that possible. Then there are um, standards uh, under the name of semantic web. Uh, in fact, semantic web happens to be an area in which uh, our center called NOESIS Center, Ohio Center of Excellence in Knowledge and Computing, uh, is one of the largest uh, academic groups in the US. Um, and uh, there are a bunch of standards uh, there for uh, how do you describe this data, semantic data, that is called resource description framework uh, standard called RDF, the query language for that called Sparkle, how do you model, you know, information and knowledge, uh, therefore that there's an OWL standard, and, and, and then um, some, you know, another one called SCOS. Um, and then the well, last uh, kind of types of web standards related to browsers so that there is some uniformity in standardization of browser technology, authoring. Uh, but now, and now web is not just about the client and server and computers. Web is about also all these devices, so called Internet of Things, which is a very, very uh, high growth area. And so there are the standardization activities that are going on with regards to mobile devices and mobile computing with regards to any other variety of other devices. So again, you can look at the link uh, at W3C to get um, a lot more detail about that. And now um, uh, let us look uh, focus on the uh, content and the data aspects of it. So um, uh, the um, Markup language, HTML, um, URI and URLs, uh, universal uh, uh, resource location, um, I think it should be URI, not UDI, uh, and um, uh, linking. Uh, so you probably know the uh, command uh, called ahref. Uh, let me uh, get here a little bit of pause. So the um, idea here is, so what I want to discuss now is um, how the uh, content uh, development uh, and content related issues uh, evolved uh, with regards to the World Wide Web. Um, so the first came this markup language, HTML, and the ability to refer to um, uh, the uh, uh, document uh, and uh, that is to where is the document so there's a location you need and that is where this URL comes into picture uh, and then you have uh, this also um, uh, the link so how do you um, make hypertext possible right uh, and that is through the linking right? so you, docu do you link one document with another document and a whole bunch of link documents uh, provide a broader sense of structure and uh, broader form of structure and, uh, and a meaning even um, then came, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mosaic browser in 1993. That was followed by the ability to. So in, initially, um, the web pages were static. So there is a basically a document on the server, and that is displayed within the browser. But then came the ability to uh, uh, create uh, the document uh, to send the data, uh, and uh, let's say you can send the data in XML, 
and then uh, you know have a program look at the data in XML and uh, and, and render it in a dif different way and that front end um, uh, technology to processes it was you know that that that, that came about uh, includes JavaScript which is uh, which which came about in 1995. Then came deep web, um, so this uh, allowed, um, you know, web page is considered to be semi-structured data because it has this, the structure, uh, for example, in HTML is all those tags, and then you have a bunch of text, right? So that is unstructured data. So that uh, com by combination of the little bit of structure of HTML and unstructured data makes it an uh, semi-structured data. And tags are the components that give you structure. But um, now uh, people wanted to make the entire database is available on the web. And then again, you, you want to uh, render the pages dynamically. Uh, for example, uh, you have database of latest uh, price on the stock. Well, then uh, you provide from the browser the name of the uh, stock symbol and the, you look up the database and it'll uh, look up the data and then display it to you, right? So that kind of uh, ability to um, the data, um, in the database, for example, the latest stock price may be updated uh, regularly. And then uh, it's not hard-coded number. And hence, um, that number, I you know, is uh, passed along uh, when uh, a query comes from a browser and that you know allows you to basically have this dynamically generated and that that is a part of what is this what i call this dynamically generated uh, or dynamically rendered web pages um and a lot of these databases also came about that were kind of sci you know put on the web but it's ex not accessible to everybody in the public so it's not like you can go to a search engine and look for them and get it but they were there uh, so those who knew how to get to them and had login and password and um, other kind of security uh, ex relate uh, you know so uh, other me other measures were taken for security and and but the data was still using um, web technologies to you know and, and those were made available using web technology now um, uh, as the web became popular uh, you initially um, I think when I started using web pages uh, web uh, perhaps there were only some thousands of pages uh, on the web, uh, maybe tens of thousands, I don't know how many. But uh, very soon we started to see millions of pages and then we saw hundreds of millions of pages. And then, uh, then, then um, uh, in, um, I would say, somewhere around 97-ish uh, time frame, 1997 time frame, there were about um, um, billion web pages. So uh, you can see here, um, you know, uh, the number of web pages, and actually the counting of the web pages is not all that easy. Um, and you know, pages get you know, created and get destroyed, and so on and so forth. So uh, the numbers can, ch you know, the it's, it's very hard to be entirely sure about exactly how many uh, web pages there are today. But nevertheless, you can see the growth and very exponential growth in the number of web pages. Now, um, if you had um, thousands or um, uh, ten thousands or hundred thousand uh, web pages, that's one way to find information. If you have billions of web pages, there is another way uh, that you have to look for to find information. Initial technology to help you find information, um, which pay a web page has information that I may be looking for. Uh, uh, was made possible by the technologies called directory, web directory or web cataloging technologies. And um, the best known uh, name uh, in that field was Yahoo. So I remember at one point of time uh, to the, uh, you know, th it was not necessarily a published knowledge but uh, somewhat semi public knowledge that Yahoo had at one point perhaps um, uh, 10,000, uh, 9,000, 10,000 um, people who are working purely to catalog the web page. So a new web page comes up and you want to be able to, um, uh, you know, you want to um, uh, 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 catalog it, say that this web page uh, is related to shopping, let's say, right? So. Let me. And um, uh, you know, manually cataloging a web page uh, into uh, a directory 
uh, is uh, time consuming and also different people would uh, catalog uh, uh, same page into uh, directory structure differently. So um, in fact I remember that uh, uh, I was told that it would uh, a single person would catalog about 50 pages per day. Now um, if you have as I said tens of thousands of pages perhaps you can keep up with that hundred thousand maybe you can but then when you have millions and billions of pages it becomes very expensive uh, 9,000 10,000 people that Yahoo had um, had one, at one point of time uh, cataloging all these things would be tremendously expensive business uh, there are a couple of other um, uh, you know major directory services look smart was one uh, demos is uh, a more of a community effort uh, open source community effort and I'll sh talk about it a little bit later then came about uh, um, you know search engines and there are some example you know some names I put there Lycos, Alta Vista, Excite and, and Google uh, which came about in 1998 as the web has evolved um, people currently classify the uh, web uh, in, in, in this uh, form of web, uh, you know, as web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, uh, typically um, uh, web as it was uh, before 2002 is retro named um, web 1.0. Nobody called uh, web as web 1.0 then, but when uh, the term for web 2.0 uh, came in vogue, then um, people say, uh, started calling the web before web 2.0 as web 1.0. And um, you know, with the web 1.0, there were um, uh, the, uh, the few people who created content, there were many people who consumed that content. Um, there were personal websites, uh, for example, I think I might have had a website in 1994, 95. Um, uh, and, and then XML came about and such. Now we will talk about Web 1.0 and Web 2.0 uh, in, the, in the next uh, slide. And now, um, in the current, uh, you know, at the current time, people call the that people people say that we are in this uh, Web 3.0 generation, the third generation of the Web. And uh, there are a number of interesting things that things that are happening here. That includes something called semantic Web, meaning that when you have this data. Uh, instead of data, the uh, uh, machine understands what the data is about. You remember uh, our discussions about data to information to knowledge and uh, wisdom. And so you uh, are making, um, you know, and I, I gave you an example earlier that the data by itself will be meaningless in terms of humans making decisions. Uh, converting the data into something meaningful is very important. Semantic Web uh, provides the technology and standards to make that possible. There are a number of other things that are happening also now that are very interesting. For example, all these kind of devices that uh, put the data on the web. So people talk about refrigerator uh, has sensors that tells you on the net, um, uh, you know, what uh, things you should be ordering. That kind of stuff. Or uh, people uh, wear smart watches, and um, um, these watches. Uh, relay information that gets combined with other data on the internet and the web and then you can use through an application uh, on a mobile phone right so these are the lot of things that are happening so um, now um, uh, it so happened that I once gave a uh, invited tech talk in 1995 um, so now remember 1995 is pretty early uh, mosaic um, uh, came about only 1993, uh, right? So, uh, but I was pretty convinced that the web is a big deal, and um, so I had captured some of those ideas and I had uh, given a talk. So here you can see the, um, you know, uh, link to the uh, uh, slides, and uh, 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 then you can, um, uh, you know, you also have links to the uh, video. Uh, and um, especially, if possible, see the first 36 minutes of the video. Um, basically, it tells you about the first three to five years of the web, and it presents some prognosis. Uh, it, it, it kind of um, uh, imagines how what what might happen. Um, then uh, the video basically itself was recorded in the 
2013, um, using the slides that were uh, created in 1995. Uh, so I've given some interpretation or may try to make some connections between the thoughts that I presented in 1995 and how it has turned out in the present. Uh, let us briefly um, look at um, uh, Web 1.0 versus 2.0. Um, with in Web 1.0, you had static uh, and personal web pages, um, uh, and uh, you really had to have an account, um, uh, or uh, you had to work with a administrator of a server, uh, where you would keep all the documents to be able to have your documents put on that server. So uh, it would not be a trivial task for me to write something up on the web and publish as a blog. So uh, now, right now, you can, um, you know, basically, uh, arbitrarily create a web page, and you don't have to necessarily know HTML now. In, when we started writing initial web pages, we had to know HTML. We had to, uh, you know, uh, work with the database or sort of web server administrator to make uh, our files available. And so that was uh, quite a workflow. Um, now we have dynamic HTML. Now we have a lot more data that is rendered uh, by simply coding RDBMS, relational databases. Um, in Web 1.0, there were basically HTML 3.2 and prior standards um, uh, for HTML. Uh, you, we were using um, custom extensions to do something specific, and that had uh, challenges because when we made custom extensions in HTML, uh, some browsers uh, would use it, uh, uh, would understand it, others won't. For example, after Mosaic and Netscape came a number of other, you know, browsers that included, for example, browser, uh, you know, Internet Explorer from Microsoft as an example. And then Microsoft had its own custom extension that others can't, uh, you know, display and so on and so forth. Uh, fortunately, a pretty good standardization has um, uh, uh, occurred uh, with regards to the content representation and as in particular HTML uh, thanks to the World Wide Web Consortium uh, which essentially manages all the standards or standards process. Uh, there is a significantly, you know, there is much better improvement in CSS um, uh, that is the style sheet so that, you know, pages look consistent and repeatable uh, kind of uh, design of the pages. Uh, there are much better web authoring tools, so you can create much more rich media uh, content, more interactive content, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, more client-side code, uh, richer experience of the user. Earlier, as I mentioned, uh, you had very limited and control authoring. Now, in Web 2.0, basically there is extensive user participation. Anybody can, can be a writer. Anybody can write a content and publish, whether as a blog, as a comment, as a post on the social media, and so these are these are what is called um, user generated user generated content. Uh, earlier, there were technologies uh, on the backend side called uh, you know CGI uh, that would allow you to essentially envelop program that the web server can present uh, or execute. Uh, then came Java server pages and ASP and um, in application uh, server pages, uh, server programming from Microsoft. Um, now there are a lot more things there. Um, software as a service is a paradigm, very well, well adopted paradigm. Uh, you have application programming interfaces, APIs, uh, that uh, basically give you a sort of interface that are published for other applications to use. Your mashups, so with the mashups, you can get uh, data from two different sources and combine in the front end. Um, client side, you have uh, technologies like AJAX uh, and uh, XML is being replaced uh, or increasingly being uh, replaced by JSON and uh, or has been done uh, replaced by JSON more or less. Uh, you have other things like uh, uh, DOM and, and so on and so forth and Flash, Flex kind of technologies for uh, visually rich uh, representations. And the server side, um, uh, there was a lot of use of PHP. Increasingly, uh, we use Python, uh, Ruby, and Perl continue to be used to some level. Uh, 
we had directory, uh, you know, giving you simple, and then we have simple search, uh, typically of, uh, and the simple search, by that what we mean is typically information retrieval based techniques, PFIDF, if you are aware of that. So, what we word frequency counts, how many times of what occurs. So, in the early days when I would uh, search a uh, car, uh, and, uh, and if one page had, had uh, uh, 10 occurrences occurrence of car, car versus, versus on the page, on the page, page five occurrences of car, um, um, then, then um, uh, uh, the, the one with one occurrence of car would come up, come up higher, higher, higher in ranking. ranking. Right. Now, now um, um, this is where this is where the uh, major uh, 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 diversion. diversion. So they so came up with so called so page, page rank. Page rank. Them. In that in uh, page rank, this is something we learn more about later in the class. Um, um, the importance of the site was given uh, uh, significant, again, importance the search uh, ranking. Uh, if, if, the, uh, if there are a lot of, the general idea is that if a particular uh, web page and site is referred to or pointed to by many more sites, then that site is important. And then when that site um, or page, uh, you know, points to another page, that page uh, starts to gain uh, importance. Uh, and so they use kind of this intelligence of the people in terms of deciding what is important by linking to those pages um, as a way of computing what is important on the web page and uh, came up with this uh, page rank that changed, uh, you know, the characters of search. Um, uh, so directories declined because, uh, you know, manual cataloging simply was not possible anymore. Um, there's more sophisticated search on you know web 2.0. This page rank, uh, page rank I always men already mentioned, and then the, uh, the web 2.0 is uh, for some synonymous with the social web and social networking. Right? So you had MySpace, uh, then came uh, Facebook. Um, uh, today, Facebook is kind of part of um, uh, you know many people's lives, you know, the, the, the many people spend quite a bit of time on Facebook. Uh, the interesting thing is, this is a technology, this is a company that is only, is less than a decade old, right? So I think Facebook uh, started in 2005, and um, uh, social web predates that, there's MySpace and other things like that, Orkut was there, uh, Orkut now ceased to exist, for example. Now you have other things like Google+. Plus blogging came about and so on and so forth. Earlier um, in Web 1.0 we had this narrow band um, uh, connection. So uh, this is what gave rise to AOL as a company where it, uh, it was the most in important internet service provider and we had modems and the speed at which we would uh, exchange the data would be 9,600 9, baud, so bits per second. Uh, and then came 5,600 bits per, you know, uh, uh, 56K, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. But this will be the data connections using modem over telephone lines. That got uh, replaced um, uh, around late um, 90s uh, with uh, broadband connections, and then that also uh, allowed us to have a lot more rich media. So it was very um, difficult to uh, send a high, uh, it was impossible to send high quality video uh, over the narrow band. With the broadband, of course, I uh, you know you, you guys know, all of you probably use Netflix or anything, things like that, and see how much data uh, passes through the internet now. In fact, the video is currently the largest form of uh, content on the web, right? Uh, they are podcasting, there are uh, images and tagging and so on and so forth. So uh, with these, um, um, I, I think I had also somewhere, uh, when I post these particular slides, you'll see the links to uh, Yahoo and LookSmart and other examples like that. So please go through all those links and um, I have a bunch of questions that um, uh, you should look at those questions, come ready to discuss them in the class. If you don't have answers to these questions, ask them. Um, now, this particular class, as you know, um, uh, we will have a system whereby um, there will be, it will allow you to communicate with each other. So, we encourage interactions and communications uh, between the class members. We'll be, uh, ins instructors will be monitoring that and uh, chiming in when you cannot uh, find the answers or where we have different point of view. 
but I would like to have lot of engagement um, by everyone in the class, uh, both during the class uh, uh, as well as offline uh, through the um, uh, software that we'll make available very shortly. Um, uh, now, uh, if, as you have watched this video, please come ready to, uh, with your questions, with the answer of these questions and any other questions you have on the materials that we have uh, discussed so far. If you have um, uh, watched, and I expect that you would have be watching uh, these videos for each class before the class, then um, uh, feel free to post questions, put the questions uh, on our uh, board and um, we'll uh, discuss that as the time goes along. Uh, we'll see you soon in the class. Bye.